Looking at example three, imagine there is a two-phase mixture of liquid and vapor steam at 2,000 kPa being transported through a pipe. Some of the steam is throttled through a calorimeter. This calorimeter is able to measure quality. The exit of the calorimeter is exhausted to atmosphere at 100 kPa. The steam exiting the calorimeter to atmosphere has a temperature of 120 degrees centigrade. We are interested in determining the quality of steam within our pipe. To begin, we are going to write our state variables. At state 1, we have a pressure of 2000 kPa, and since we have a mixture of liquid and vapor within our pipe, our temperature at state 1 is equal to our saturation temperature of our pressure at state 1. That is 212.42 degrees centigrade. At state 2, we have a pressure of 100 kPa, a temperature of 120 degrees centigrade, which puts us into our superheated vapor region. Now we can schematically draw our calorimeter as follows. We have a large pipe in which M.1 is entering. M.1 is a mass flow rate of our liquid vapor mixture. We insert a small tube into this large pipe to siphon off a small portion of this fluid. This goes through our calorimeter and exits at state 2 to atmosphere, such that we have M.2 within our system. M.2 exiting at state 2 is the same as our mass flow entering at state 1. Now if we apply our conservation of mass and conservation of energy equation to the throttle, assuming that we have no heat loss to or from our throttle, and that our throttle, i.e. calorimeter, is not doing any work or has any work done onto it, and we assume our velocities at state 1 and state 2 are equal, and there are no changes of elevation between state 1 and state 2, we can cross out q dot, w dot, v1 squared per 2, v2 squared per 2, gz1, and gz2. Thus, our enthalpy at state 1 would be equal to our enthalpy at state 2. Now, our enthalpy at state 1 is going to be that of our saturated liquid at state 1, plus our quality at state 1, times the difference of our saturated vapor minus our saturated liquid. Our enthalpy at state 2 is known for we have superheated vapor existing at 120 degrees centigrade and a pressure of 100 kPa. Rearranging for our quality at state 1, x1 is equal to our enthalpy at state 2, less our saturated liquid specific enthalpy at state 1, per our saturated vapor, less our saturated liquid specific enthalpies at state 1. If we substitute in our values for H2, HF1, and HG1, we find our quality at state 1 is equal to 0 0.956. Now, what we recognize is state 1, since our quality is existing between 0 and unity, has to exist within our vapor dome and state 2 is existing as a superheated vapor. Thus, if we evaluate our specific volume at state 1, that is, we take our saturated liquid specific volume and our saturated vapor specific volumes to calculate nu1, that is, our saturated liquid specific volume corresponding to a pressure of 2000 kPa being 0 0.001177 meters cubed per kg, plus our quality at state 1 times the difference of our saturated vapor less our saturated liquid specific volumes existing at 2000 kPa, i.e. 0.09845 meters cubed per kg, gives us a value of 0.095295 meters cubed per kg. Now at state 2, we can find our specific volume via interpolation. That is, at 100 kPa, we are going to interpolate between 120 degrees centigrade, which is our exit temperature, 99.62 degrees centigrade, which is our lower bound, i.e. our saturation temperature, 400 kPa, and 150 degrees centigrade, which is our upper bound for our temperature on our superheated steam table. Determining our specific volume at state 2 via interpolation, we get a value of 1.85864 meters cubed per kg. Now recall 
the one main assumption about a throttle. Our mass flow in is equal to our mass flow out. Thus, our density times cross-sectional area times velocity at state one has to be equal to our density times cross-sectional area times velocity at state two. And we assumed we had a constant cross-sectional flow area and we express our density in terms of specific volume. Our continuity equation becomes our velocity per specific volume at state one is equal to our velocity per specific volume at state two. However, since our specific volumes at state one and state two differ due to temperature and pressure effects, we see V1 would be equal to V2 per nu one per nu two, or our velocity at state one is equal to 0 0.0513 V2. That is to say, for a constant cross-sectional area, our assumption that our densities at our inlet and exit is incorrect. That is our formulation for the conservation of energy for this particular device is invalid for our densities are not equivalent. The only way for this to be valid is if our ratio of areas is inversely proportional to that of our velocities.